I'm Nick Green with AM Best TV. We're in Philadelphia for the Institute CPCU Reinsurance Symposium. Joining us now is Maritza Costa. She is Senior Financial Analyst with AM Best. So Maritza, third party capital is estimated to be about 95 billion and growing. Do you think there's a ceiling there? Is there a limit to how high it can go? No, we think uh, third party capital will be an important um, aspect of the reinsurance industry. Um, we do think that f given the losses of 2017 and 2018, that will decline a little bit for 2019, just because of the trap capital that are in some of these funds to pay for these losses. And some of the investors are not willing to replenish that capital, double down per se. So we saw some funds having a hard time going back to investors and, and get more capital out of them to compensate for the trap capital from these losses. But overall, we think that it will continue to grow. It will continue to be a, a, a big part of the reinsurance market um, going forward. It's just um, we'll have to wait and see how it develops for 2019. If there's no losses, maybe they'll double down. If there's some losses, maybe they'll retract a little bit more. But overall, we think that will continue to grow. So after the losses of 2017 and 2018, some investors actually took a direct hit. Do you think they were aware of the risks involved? Well, we don't, we're not aware of what some of these funds were invested in or what their risk appetite was. But one would think that with the 2017 and one, the 2018 losses, those losses took some of the investors by surprise just because they've had positive returns for many years. Um, the ILX index estimates that returns over the past 12 years has been about 5%. There's only been three years of, of losses in that index. Two of those was 17 and 18, and the one before that was 2011. So some might, might have been a bit surprised, and hopefully they'll get smarter about it and more um, educated about the risks they're investing in. Um, the big surprise for some of them, I think it was the aggregate losses from the uh, wildfires, because that's where a lot of the adverse development is coming from in California in 2017 and 2018. So those risks are very hard to model. They're, they're not as robust as the hurricane and the earthquake models that are out there in the market. So surprised, yes, some. But again, like I said, I think investment will continue. It's just um, they need to get educated. They need to understand the risks they're in. And um, they need to demand higher pricing for returns to be acceptable. For, for these investors. So how are traditional reinsurers using this third party capital? So um, we, we've seen a flux of M&A activity, some of the traditional reinsurers embracing this third party capital. We've seen some acquisitions in 2018, AIG bought Validus, which has Helphacat. Um, Nafila was bought by Markel. So we do see um, a convergence of this capital in the market. We think it will continue because for them, um, it's a way to lower their own cost of capital if they can partner with this type of third party capital so they free up their balance sheet risk. And um, on the other hand, they can make fee income if they underwrite those risks themselves for these investors. So it's uh, for the industry to come together um, and for these traditional reinsurers to embrace this third party capital, um, we think it's going to continue and it's, um, it's going to expand in the market and we're going to see more of it. Maritza, thanks so much for speaking with us today. Thank you. For AM Best TV in Philadelphia, I'm Meg Green.